a lot of women are unaware and aren't proud of what it really means to be a woman and understanding the importance of the role that only we can fulfill. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Annery Morgan. Today I'll be answering the question, what is a woman? As time goes by, we're finding out it's getting harder and harder to actually define this word. And I mean, the definition is really getting fogged in modern society, especially the Western world. And we see that there is a generation of young women that are growing up without having any idea of what their pre-birth assigned role is and we're also seeing that the traditional responsibilities that's termed like homemaker and so forth they are spoken about in a derogatory way and almost like something is wrong with a woman for desiring such a lifestyle we also see on social media platforms especially instagram and tiktok where women with disheartening experiences that are performing the traditional roles, they tend to be louder than the many women that are basking in the experience. And them attaching this negative connotation to the experience of true womanhood, it's like it's discouraging the young girls that are growing up from actually exploring their biological roles and basking in their womanhood, such as becoming mothers and enter in a partnership where both partners are equal but have two distinct very important roles and the statistics are telling so now more than 50 percent of women are hitting their 30s and being childless majority of women are missing out on their most fertile years more women than not are tapping into the provider role and shifting into more of the masculine scene. Of course, there are multiple other factors that we can explore, which is that inflation rate is not matching an increase in income, but it still doesn't cover the reasoning that a lot of women are unaware and aren't proud of what it really means to be a woman and understanding the importance of the role that only we can fulfill. And another evidence of the fact that the definition of womanhood is being lost is that we see that there are another set of humans, there are men that are actually claiming womanhood and claiming that they are women. And it's even more telling of how lost the true definition of womanhood is. The fact that a whole biological male can be able to tap in and say that he is a woman and that is accepted by even women. So my definition is heavily scientific as I do come from a biochemical background and I am a doctor of pharmacy and a big portion of what I studied aside from the drugs itself is how the body actually responds to chemicals, how it responds to hormones and the influence of exogenous factors meaning outside chemicals, how they influence or biochemistry. With the knowledge that I have Seeing the discrepancies between a man versus a woman and what the definitions are, it's kind of mind-boggling to me because there is a clear biological difference between us and clear important role that we both play. All right, so finally, what is a woman? I have a woman is an adult human being genetically equipped to produce the physical and psychological dynamic needed to create and nurture life, right? So you want me to say it again? A woman is an adult human being genetically equipped to produce the physical and psychological dynamic needed to create and nurture life. So now, I know in the definition I mentioned to create, and I know that there are tons of women out there that actually are deemed infertile. Does this mean that this person is no longer a woman because she cannot actually bear a child? I want to make it clear, even if you don't have the ability to create and carry a child on your own, you still have genetically distinct biological features that allow you to still be able to nurture a child. All right, so let's get into the depth of why I defined it the way I did. We were born with one to two million eggs. Before puberty, majority of our development as female is preparing us for child rearing. And then after puberty, every single month 
up until menopause, your body keeps preparing and trying to get you pregnant. <laughs> How so? All right. So every month, our cycle is divided into four, right? And if you really pay attention to each week of your cycle, you technically recognize that you're kind of a different person. So let's break it down, all right? So week one starts with menstruation, which basically your body's technically mourning the fact that your egg wasn't fertilized. And the hormonal reaction causes the lining of your womb to be ripped off and expelling the unfertilized egg. This is what causes our awful cramps or diarrhea or acne or sore breasts, all that fatigue and our mood swings. So that's like the mourning phase. It's like a disappointment, a sadness is going on and it's almost like rage, like your body's mad that it failed again. <laughs> all right, so week two now is your follicular phase where your body starts getting optimistic, <laughs> basically starts to prepare the next egg for ovulation. Oh, when I say optimistic, I mean your body feels like, okay, you know what? This month will be the month. This is the month that I will have this egg fertilized. And because of this, your energy goes up and so does your happiness. You're looking forward to the week. Usually this feeling is interpreted in the work world where that's the best time you're working on projects. You you know, things are going good for you. <laughs> and then week three comes your ovulation. And this is when the egg is ready. It's crazy how it's like you have a mind of your own. Who's like you and your personalities, your likes, your dislikes. But your body has its own personality, its own thing going on. Even though we're walking around and doing our own thing based off our mind. Your body has its own separate agenda <laughs> so week three is ovulation and yes this week the egg is ready so all you want to do at this moment is either be with your partner or find a partner off of my personal experience i really just can't focus on anything constructive that week my ovulation week is like extremely strong and that's when you tend to be glowing you feel more attractive that week and I mean, you're flirty, you, you're trying to find somebody to fertilize your egg, technically. <laughs> and then comes your week four, which is your luteal phase. This week depends on whether or not you actually fertilize the egg, right? So if you did fertilize it, your body begins to prepare for pregnancy. It's happy, it's saying yes. <laughs> it's like, all right, we're successful. We're moving on to the next phase, a whole new world, right? And if you didn't, fertilize the egg. This is when the hormones of disappointment start kicking in. And this is like the PMS. So you're moody, you feel bloated, you have cravings. And honestly, it's kind of like your body's upset with itself in a way and thinking that, oh my God, I failed again. And then the very next week again, you start back to week one, which is your menstruation. So it's disappointed in week four, starts crying in week one again. So the cycle starts again, it's optimistic again. You know what? This will be the month. This month. I like talking the story like that because it really is how your hormones are communicating the story to you. If you really like sit down and focus on what's really happening. Majority of being a woman is your body trying to get you pregnant. And then when you're pregnant, it prepares you for the growth of the baby and then for birth. And then you give birth and then your biological instincts start to come off that kicks you into motherhood. My whole point is that a man can fulfill such a role, but they'll never do it as good as a biological woman. It's sad that I have to say a biological woman, but that's the point. All of this is to say that as a woman, your entire biology does not care whether or not you're the CEO of a company or you're a boss babe or you're anything. Your whole entire biology does not give a crap whether or not you made a million trillion dollars last year. All it wants you to do is to be a mother. So how did we get here? How did we get to this place where our role is so heavily diminished to the point where it's linked to shame? When I see women online basking in their femininity, check the comment section. It's always women bashing them and trying to convince them that they'll never be fulfilled and if that's all they want to do and stuff like that. To the point where even me, when I was going for my doctoral degree and persons kept asking me like, what do you want to do after pharmacy school? 
I mean, I had my career related goals, but my number one goal has always been to be a mother. And I was so ashamed to even express it to anybody because of the backlash that I would get whenever I do express it. So I just suppressed that side of me and just told people like, oh, I want to do this, that and the third and something related to a corporate lifestyle. I was so ashamed to actually just express that. Honestly, I want to focus on motherhood. So how do we get to this place? This place of shame this place where women are uncomfortable to express their biological desires. How do we get to a place where men think it's okay to call themselves women and women are accepting it? How did we get to the point where women are shouting that we're not baby making machines? Like, yeah, we are. <laughs> I mean, we're not machines like robots, but I mean, if we don't do it, who else is? How did we get to a place where even men are saying, oh, I don't want a woman that won't pay 50% of the bills. <laughs> so let's talk about feminism, okay? Feminism started in the early 1900s. It was an advocacy for women's rights on the basis of equality for both sexes. I cannot come on here and bash feminism. It is because of feminism where I'm able to sit here and be talking with no consequences to it. It's because of feminism why I was able to decide whether or not I want to pursue a career. It's because of feminism why I have the right to leave a marriage. I have a say in politics. Overall, it's because of feminism where I'm able to be seen and respected as a human being and treated on the same level as a man. But unfortunately, sometimes in an attempt to level the playing field, the line tends to get completely thrown off. And I think that's what we're seeing today. We can obviously see that it's a competition going on between men and women. It's not even a competition because men aren't competing with us. <laughs> but it's like this anger and rage that's going on, this anti-men thing that's happening. And that has nothing to do with the initial representation of what feminism is. With that line being bent too far, we find that women are being completely misaligned with their purpose in life. As a result, we see tons of methods out there that are being put in place to suppress womanhood. One of the main ones is birth control. It's constantly putting us in an emotional wreck as our bodies try to counter it because we're technically using it to suppress the hormones our body produces that's basically trying to get us pregnant. I personally believe that if you've been on birth control for over 10 years, you have absolutely no idea who you are. <laughs> when, for at least me, when I tried birth control, I was a zombie a raging zombie walking around. And it's after I came off that I actually focus on my, my natural rhythm and find out who I was. And that's when I had the most progress I've ever had. Another method is abortions and another one is daycares. Now I want you to understand that I am an ambitious woman and I am basking in what feminism has given me the opportunity to do. But I don't want us women to continue to not see the purpose that only we can fulfill. We need to understand that without us, humanity is completely doomed. Like it's a teamwork that happens between men and women that continues life. I want you to think about it really hard. We have the ability to take a single microscopic sperm and turn it into more men and women. <laughs> like I can't see how that can possibly be something that's not valued, that's an honor. And I mean, it's hard work. And it is based on our nurturing ability that we tap into. We determine the future of the next generation and the success of the very next generation. Yeah, it's up to us whether we raise a level-headed future generation or we be absent and have daycares, nannies, TVs, music, and microwave meals create a whole new doomed society. We have to stop this hate that's going on towards men. We need to recognize the value and the difference in the role of men. We also have men that don't see the value of women and don't understand it. But there's absolutely no way that we can get them to understand it if we ourselves don't even understand it. <laughs> so that's it. After all this yabbing, that's it. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you like content like this, subscribe and like the video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Anne-Marie Morgan and...